Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, October 13th, and it is a beautiful fall morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania, although apparently some rain is coming. Such is life. So today I am, uh, I'm really enjoying this pipe. I smoked it on the live stream a couple weeks ago for the first time, and I've been breaking it in. It's my new pipe from our friend Phil Rivara and it is just fantastic it's a, it's a nice uh pot i asked him for a wide bowl deep bowl pot uh, which is a bit of a contradiction in terms but i like big I, I like to have enough tobacco in a pot to to enjoy it for a while uh he made i, I mean that's about all i told him and he took off from there and he just made this beautiful pipe look look at the hope you can see the metal work on that it is brass and it is just beautiful. All hand done. Picked a beautiful amber sort of stem, tortoiseshell amber. And uh, yeah, just fantastic. I am very, very happy with this pipe and it smokes really well. I mean, I've been breaking it in, but the truth is, it the first time I smoked it, it was like an old friend. Uh, still got the. You know, it takes a while for the flavor to get to where you are comfortable with it just because there's still uh, some briar burning and things like that but it's it's darn close to perfect and I was too lazy to refill my Zippo this morning so I'm using this honor lighter thank you great tunnel uh, fantastic lighter I keep it by my uh, on the table where I keep all my pipe stuff upstairs and uh, while I will use the Zippo 90% of the time that 10% of the time where I pick up the Zippo and go oh it's, it's out of fuel it's right there and uh, it, it holds butane forever and it's been very reliable um, so on or lighter highly recommend them if you're into butane lighters so today I want to do uh, a little story I guess uh, but but there's a there's a point to it I think <laughs> we'll, we'll find out if there's a point to it so I I've talked about this a couple times I was building um, a little tool shed out in my uh, my backyard to put all of the like gardening tools and rakes and things like that into um, and I had a small spot that I was thinking I would put this in and measured it out and everything and, and it turns out I was able to find something that was exactly the size I needed uh, but it came flat packed and it took me quite a while to to build it because well first off it's complicated uh, it, it's got I'll, I'll show you a picture in a minute but the darn thing probably weighs the screws and bolts and nuts in this thing probably weigh more than the panels do <laughs> there's just so many screws and the, the instructions were horrible uh, but I, I got it close to complete in a couple of hours, and then I had to stop, and then uh, wound up having to go to Pittsburgh because of my father-in-law and everything. Uh, so that put a week break in the middle. Anyway, I eventually got back to it. I finished it up in another couple hours, and I'm pretty happy with it. I sent some pictures out to my friends and fam a couple family members, my, my, my brother actually, um, who showed it to my sister, which I wish he hadn't done. And... My wife saw it for the first time when she came back from Pittsburgh, and pretty much everyone has had the same reaction, which is, that looks like a closet. I thought you were building a shed. That thing is small. Why did it take you so long? Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's not a shed. That's like been universally that no, nobody said, hey, that looks nice. <laughs> and it's not that I'm looking to have my ego stroked or anything, but it's exactly what I wanted. And it did take me a while to build, and I don't know. You don't you don't look at something a man builds and say, "Yeah, is that all you could do?" So I'm I'm a little a little mad about that, but I'll get over it. Anyway, let let me show you a couple pictures just so you know what I'm talking about here. This this is the shed in all its glory, and it is small. It was just supposed to be a tool closet, so no surprise there. And I think I've got a another shot of it open there you go so that's what the inside looks like and plenty of room to stand up all those long tools and then there's a little shelf at the top for, for putting some stuff right now there's just a trowel up there but uh yeah it's again it's it was 
it was exactly the size I wanted and, and exactly what I was going for. So what are you going to do? That's my shit. So as I was building this, uh, you might have noticed down at the bottom, I have it raised up off the ground on a couple of two by fours, which is just temporary. Next uh, spring, I'm going to put a gravel pad down to, to, to set it on and level it out properly and everything. It is level right now, but I had to stick some shims and stuff underneath it so it's not ideal but it'll be fine for the winter and we can worry about it in the spring uh so i needed a couple of, and i had some pressure treated lumber uh that i had used to build a ramp you might have seen the ramp in the first picture uh last year so i still had some scraps left over from that i had a piece that was big enough to cut and use to make those two sort of runners that i put underneath and when I cut stuff like that, you know, I do it outside and because it's pressure treated. I don't really like to bring pressure treated wood down here to the shop. It tends to be wet and it just makes a mess and you get rust on your tools and stuff. So anyway, I have a circular saw that I'll use to cut that kind of stuff. And I went to get my circular saw and I couldn't find it. And I realized that my circular saw was actually in the trunk of my car because I had taken it to, to do something somewhere else. And my car was at the shop, which is another long story. So I thought, well, what am I going to do? So I picked up the piece of uh, pressure treated two by four and I brought it down here to the shop. And I looked around and my table saw it right now is oddly enough covered in books. Another long story. But it would take far too long to get the table saw available. Bandsaw is not doesn't have a deep enough throat to cut it because I needed like 26 inch pieces and I think a bandsaw only cut like 14 or something so couldn't use the bandsaw so I grabbed a handsaw now I like handsaws I've talked about them in the past you know I'm a hand tool guy and I, I really do enjoy using hand tools but I I I need to be honest about my hand tool usage because these days I don't really use them to break down stock. So I have what I consider joinery saws, well, what everybody considers joinery saws. Um, things like dovetail saws, carcass saws, tenon saws, those kind of things, they tend to be finer and they're meant for that more detailed work where you're trying to get two pieces of wood to join together. Uh, I use those all the time. I really enjoy using those and I'd much rather use those like I'd much rather cut dovetails by hand and get out a router and use a router jig and all that stuff. So that's my go to in the saw world. I do have panel saws and panel saws are used to break down stock usually. And the truth is these days when I'm breaking down stock like if I'm getting a raw piece of ash or, or cherry or whatever from from uh, the hardwood distributor that I use and I bring it in here and I need to turn that into something that I can then use those finer saws to to join most of the time these days I'll use I've got a table saw I've got a joiner I've got a planer so I've got all the power tools to do that stuff and the reason is it's just it's faster and I've got limited shop time I can do it the other way, the old the old way. I can use a panel saws to cut it. I can get out my hand planes and, and plane things flat and square and everything. I know how to do it, and I do sometimes still do it just for fun. But most of the time, if I'm building something, I, I'll use the power tools to get that initial big piece of lumber down to manageable size pieces and flat and square. So uh, I, I neglect my panel saws, but I've got quite a few of them because I like them. and. Uh, you can often go to yard sales. I'm talking too much here. You can often go to yard sales or, or flea markets and find them for practically nothing. One time I was looking at a, a flea market at a distant saw, and I think there were three saws, and there was one that I was interested in. And it was getting late, and it was starting to rain a little bit. And... I asked the guy how much the saw was, and he said, uh, it's $5. And, you know, $5 for a big panel saw. And I thought, well, I'm going to probably buy this. Um, but 
you know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta try to haggle no, no matter what. I, I know it's silly when it's only five bucks, but, uh, I said something like, you know, would you, would you take three or something? I don't know what I said, but I basically indicated that I'd like to pay less than five dollars. And he looked at me, and he, you know, we're, we're starting to feel drops in rain. And he's got all this stuff he's got to load back into his to his car or truck or whatever. And he says, uh, instead of going down, I'll tell you what, I'll give you all three of them for seven. That, so, yeah, of course, I gave him seven dollars and took all three sauce. So the point is, I tend to accumulate these things because I like them, and uh, they are useful, and they do a fine job. You know, there's nothing wrong with an old panel saw. So, I brought the... Two by four down here. Measured out the twenty six inches or whatever it was. I've got to keep popping, or I'm going to keep relighting it. And I reach for this little beauty. This is you're not going to be able to see that, but this is a distant. Um, you might just be able to catch the etching. A little bit of etching on there. No, nah, it's not going to show up. It's really hard to see. Uh, but one thing that I think is kind of cool is that right here, there's an E and a W stamped in. I pointed wrong there, but you can see them. E and W. So this saw was owned by somebody with the initials EW, and uh, he marked it so that it didn't get mixed up with other men's saws when he was at his work, at the work site. Uh, this saw, you can date them by the medallion here. Um, and this saw was made around 1900, plus or minus maybe 10 years. When I got it, it was a bit rusty, um, certainly a bit dirty. I probably had to take some paint off the handle because I don't think I've ever bought an old tool that didn't have paint on it. I, I don't know how that happens, but they always have little flecks of paint on them. But I cleaned it up a bit. I didn't do much, uh, and I sharpened it, and sharpening saws was... A bit of an art form but anybody can learn to do it it's not hard this is cross cut sharpened and uh, I oiled it up because I put a coat of oil you might be able to see it's kind of shiny uh, put a coat of oil on it just to keep it from rusting um, and hung it up on the wall so I reached for it because it was the right size for what I wanted to do and uh, made the first cut and it sliced right through you know and i'm not cutting to the line or anything it doesn't have to be perfect it's just to throw underneath the shed not a closet uh, and it worked beautifully you know as i knew it would because it's it's a saw that's what it's designed to do and i know how to use it and you know it does take a little bit of skill but to make that kind of a cut i, I could teach you how to do it in about five minutes I moved to the next line, clamped things down, cut it again, and I was done. And I realized that in the time it probably would have taken me to find the extension cord for the circular saw, I had made those two cuts, and I was done. Uh, wiped the saw down, put a fresh coat of oil on it because the pressure-treated wood is wet, usually. Uh, and, you know, just to avoid any rusting. Hung it back up on the wall, and it sat there until this morning when I took it down to tell you the story. But I'm, I'm really in love with these things. Um, not just saws, but any old tools like this, because it's kind of like an estate pipe. You know, when I smoke an estate pipe, I think to myself, man, this thing's got stories to tell. And this equally has stories to tell. You know, in, in 1900, somebody made this. And sure, it was in a factory, and he probably didn't put much personal attention into it, but probably a heck of a lot more personal attention than anyone ever put into your table saw, my table saw. And then E.W., let's call him Ed, because I can't think of any other name right now that begins with E. Eustace. Ed walked in to wherever he bought saws back then, and he bought it, and uh, he used it. He worked with it. It was it was his part of his livelihood. 
And then maybe his son, Ed Jr., uh, got it when his dad passed away, you know, collected up some of his tools to remember him by. And maybe he just made birdhouses on the weekend or something with it. And then ultimately it wound up at a yard sale and somebody picked it up or it wound up in a estate sale and the guy that I bought it from picked it up and didn't know what he had. And not that this is, you know, I got a deal on it, but it wasn't like, you know, this is a thousand dollar saw and I got it for five dollars or something. And you could probably buy one of these for fifty or sixty dollars, I, I guess. I don't know. I don't know what the market is for them. Uh, but now I have it and, and I'm part of that legacy. And, you know, Maybe EW was building houses or, or maybe putting in staircases or making making end tables. Who knows, who knows what he was doing? He was doing something with wood. And now my silly little 2 by 4 cuts for that supporting the shed are part of that legacy that, that he started way back in 1900 plus something. That, that, that the manufacturer started in 1900 plus or minus something. So that just... There's something really special about that, to know that when I'm using that, I'm part of that, that history. And I love that. I also love that by using a, you know, everybody would agree, it took more time to make the cut with the handsaw than it would have taken with the circular saw. No question about it. So I slowed down. You know, I did, I did the work in a slower fashion. But I got to the end point faster than I would have. And that's, that's a really interesting thought because okay, it's kind of obvious this time because I would have had to look for the extension cord and whatnot. Plus, I didn't have the saw. I would have had to driven out the Doyle's town to get the saw, which I wasn't going to do. But when I think about times when I'm down here working, and I've got the power tool there, and I've got the hand tool, and I choose the hand tool. It does slow me down, but it gives me time to think about what I'm doing. It gives me time to adjust. It gives me time to not overcut or not undercut, um, pay attention to what I'm doing, but also to think about the overall project. And, you know, maybe I don't want to cut that there. Maybe, maybe I need to change that. Maybe I want to think through this again before I do it. And maybe I've saved myself a mistake. So in the end, I think a lot of the times I get to the end faster. Make fewer mistakes. Fewer do-overs. And importantly, I'm more connected to the process. I'm more engaged with it. I'm not just manufacturing something you know i'm not a i'm not a machinist i'm a woodworker um i'm not just assembling i'm i'm making i'm, I'm building I'm, I'm creating and you know there are people that create beautiful things with with, with power tools i'm not i'm not trying to say there's anything wrong with it but for me I just feel better when I use a hand tool. The next time you're at a flea market and you see a old Distin or, I mean, there's a lot of other manufacturers. I just happen to like Distin because they're Philadelphia, they were Philadelphia based and they've got a long history. But you see that, that old hand tool That old panel saw, five bucks, buy it, learn to sharpen it, hang it on the wall. Maybe someday you'll need it, and you might be surprised. On second thought, don't do that because I want to buy it. Just leave it there. Leave it there until the guy is overpriced. That would, that would be great if you could do that for me. All right, so today 
What am I doing? And now I'm drinking some coffee and uh, talking to you. I've got big plans for today to do almost nothing useful. I've got to work. I've got to make some slides for a couple of presentations on Monday that I should have done on Friday, but I was too busy on Friday. You know how it goes. There's rumor that my wife is heading off to Pittsburgh today. Uh, she said, get me up at 8 o'clock because I'm going to Pittsburgh. It's now quarter to 10. I haven't gotten her up yet. I tried. I have to send, spend some time seeing her off, and i got to do these, make these slides. So, And you probably have things to do on your Sunday. So I'm going to let you go now. It's been wonderful chatting with you. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know, because sometimes people don't like it when I get too far off the pipe and tobacco thing, but that was, I enjoyed it, so I hope you did too. Let me know if you did, and, and I will not change what I do if you say, no, nah, I don't like it when you talk about tools. I'm just curious how many of you will like it. Uh, I'm still going to do what I do, because that's what I do. <laughs> anyway, before I ramble even more, I'm going to call this to a close. So I hope you have a great Sunday, and you're looking forward to a fantastic week, week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.